get the meeting started at 6 p.m. on February 12th, 2024. I'll call the meeting to order of the Central Vermont Career Center School Board, School District Board. Um, I'm Jill Remick. Uh, welcome everyone. It looks like we definitely have a quorum. Thanks everyone for popping on and we've got a, a good crew here in the room. Um, let's see, and it looks like we don't have any members of the public for public comment. Um, does anybody have any agenda revisions or anything we need to update the agenda with? This is what Jody said. Okay. All right. So first up, I would like to um, I'd like a motion to approve the meeting minutes from both January eighth. Um, we'll do them one at a time. So our January eighth regular board meeting. I move that we accept the minutes. Thank you, Jana. Do I have a second? Second. Lyman, thank you. All right, any further discussion? It's warmed up. All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so we've passed our meeting minutes. Um, and then we did have a special meeting on January 19th to do some um, approvals for hiring. So I'm looking for a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 19th. So moved. Thank you, Lyman. Do you have a second? Second. Thanks, Jim. I think there's enough of a delay in the... Is that what it I is? Maybe. <laughs> um, all right. Any further discussion, comments, or questions on that one? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. So we passed our meeting minutes. All right, and we have a couple new board members. Do you mind introducing yourself? Uh, hi. Uh, <laughs> don't say, say me. Uh, I'm Chase Eastman. I'm in the um, EMS one. Uh, I come here periodically when I have time. I'm also uh, working separately at Shaw's in Berlin, and I recently got hired on the Barrytown Fire Department. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's great to be here. Love to see the different perspective from being a student and then being here. It's good. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much okay. for coming yeah. on top of everything else of course, you have no, going on. No That's great. What year are you? Are you a sophomore? Uh, I'm a junior. I'm mean, not junior. Sorry, I'm a senior actually. You're senior. So I apologize. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> Time flies. You don't want to go back there, do you? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Yeah, of course. Um, all right, next up we have our presentation from our Equity Scholar in Residence. Welcome, Life. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, lost my... But there's also a link in the agenda um, for those who are interested. There you go. Great. Well, thanks for having me. So my name is Life Ligeros. Uh, I serve in this role, Equity Scholar in Residence. Um, I started last year, kind of near the end of the year, coming in about once a week. And um, at this point, uh, I'm here three or four days a week. So I'm just going to say a little bit about the role and then really um, the, the, the main update tonight is around the the, the equity policy revision and um, facilitating some recommendations for you all. Um, so this slide uh, just kind of mentions that three to four day a week model and um, so that's kind of the, the residence part. Um, you know my background uh, certainly in education I have a doctorate um, in education leadership um, and I've been incorporating equity into to everything I do for, for the last couple of decades and just been doing a ton of learning on a daily basis um, from students, from teachers, from others. Um, so I guess that's the scholar, scholar part. Uh, the, the position is, so I, I don't work directly for CVCC, I work for um, this group, uh, the Institute for Liberatory Innovation, that's the ILI um, you see on that second bullet. And so the position is um, funded through that group, and CBC kicks in with um, Perkins funding. Mm -hmm. um, so the the 
uh, I'm not the only person in this ESR role um, at ILI. Um, we're getting the acronyms going now. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, the, the, you know, our, our, the model kind of has these general principles around it, even though our um, our day-to-day -day work looks quite different depending on site. Um, and that's part of the embedded idea, mm -hmm. right? That we're just responsive to local needs. Um, but the principles include things around relationships. Um, there's this learner center professional development is the way it's phrased here, but really that just means trying to support people in their own questions, inquiries, and in, in their own journey in this work versus kind of hitting them over the head with things. Um, and then just the idea that, you know, the, the kind of scholar part being that I'm available as a resource. So anytime somebody has a question, I can go off and research it, whether it's like a general question about, you know, equity. Um, writ large, or if it's like, huh, how might I teach this particular topic? Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, in this case, Jody's saying, hmm, I wonder how, what, uh, what kind of recommendations um, we could provide for the board around the revision of an equity policy. Mm -hmm. So anything yes. like that, I'm just available to, mm -hmm. to do that thinking um, as sort of, you know, a support. Um, and then Jody and I, within this position, created a few goals for what it means here at CVCC. So that's that last major bullet here. And so we have, you know, these buckets around um, inclusion and belonging for students, um, general um, raising understanding around equity um, for staff, um, but that also includes inclusion and belonging or, or community with staff. Um, there's this. A, a branch around sort of civics and social awareness um, and then um, of course changing systems in the school and so if somebody was to ask me if you want to break it down even more I kind of put it like when I introduce myself to students and whatnot it's like you know I do the um, belonging and community part of equity that we can all you know show up as our true selves in all spaces in school ideally um, moving towards that and then there's um, society, mm -hmm. how you're going to navigate it and how as a, a citizen in a multicultural democracy, how you're going to help, you know, perform your civic duties and help us make things better. Um, so just around the, these four goals, just uh, wanted to say a couple things on each because Jody and I have broken them down even a little bit more. So the, you know, working with students around inclusion and belonging, that means um, helping teachers around how to create community in their classrooms. Um, and that could be kind of working through general principles or in some cases teachers might say, you know, can you come in and help me, you know, run my morning circle with students where we might just, you know, do some get to know you activities or whatever it is. So again, just like continuum of, res of support um, to just be responsive to, to whatever their needs are. Um, community at CVCC is quite unique because within each program there are just incredibly vibrant strong communities of belonging um, which is great uh, and something that's an absolute you know fundamental need for all human beings and something that not all students get in school um, and also then thinking about how students interact across programs right um, and that part can be a little harder because there's just not a lot of opportunities unless we're really intentional about it. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, student voice kind of generally, like how students are feeling like they have ownership over their education, they're able to like um, help um, steer how things are going in classes, be autonomous individuals, and then also just like across the student body um, having student leadership. Um, so, you know, oftentimes, I mean, they're the experts, right? Um, as you get to know Chase, you'll definitely see the insights he brings. Um, but Chase serves on that group as well. So um, we pretty much have a representative or two from every program. And so it's a super interesting, diverse group when we get together on a weekly basis. And so one of the things that group has been focusing on this year specifically is community across programs. So they've been thinking about, you know, the quarterly assemblies where we get together, like how could those be something that like, really builds community. They've come up with some cool ideas. We've had some fun times. We've learned a lot. Um, and so we just, we learn a lot from them and doing an awesome job. Chase, anything you want to add about just the student leadership part at the, at the moment? I mean, everything so it's pretty, continues what we do. It's exactly what we do. 
Well, feel free to chime in or if I say something weird, okay. correct me. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's the first goal around community and belonging for students. The second goal inc includes that for staff and it's just kind of like generally raising everybody's like understanding around equity. And just to be clear that it's not like there's, you know, some, you know, understanding on high that we're trying to bring down to everybody, right? This is just complicated stuff that everybody's trying to navigate together. Um, so there's different venues for staff to like be thinking about these issues together, right? There's kind of like some um, voluntary ones. Um, and so eventually this will be like, hey, this week we might be talking about, you know, X topic. Um, right now, those, that, those meetings have been pretty much focused on the equity policy, but it makes sense, right? If we're going to try to think about how to revise or how to provide recommendations, we've got to learn some stuff together. So we've been doing lots of learning that way. There's opportunities to do it with the entire staff. So um, as Jody was talking about in, in the, the previous program committee meeting, um, during the last professional development day, like I did something around culturally responsive practices with every teacher, you know, in small groups throughout the day. Um, we might slip it in in different professional development days in different ways. Um, so there's the stuff we all do together. Um, and then just, you know, to mention that there's already lots of things that have been in place in the past or that are ongoing. Um, we're not like reinventing everything from scratch, right? So there's been lots of different equity conversations and learnings and practices, including different surveys, trainings, uh, restorative practices is like a huge thing that's been ongoing here for some time. Um, so we're building on all of that as well. Uh, the third goal is around this kind of civics and social awareness. So I just mentioned this culturally responsive practices, um, which is something that's in the equity policy currently and it's kind of like an overarching thing that you'll see um, across equity and education. It's, it's probably the most foundational like set of practices like if you want to do equity in the classroom here's how to do it like pull from this research base and i'll just mention that that culturally responsive practices has a number of things around it including like cultural competence and different things but one of the major things trying to help build students ability to take social action so how how collective action works in our democracy how to get together with other people to try to like move systems and institutions and make positive change basically so and the way that Jody and I have been thinking about it is kind of like in a kind of a civic sense. Um, and, you know, this certainly gets to a lot of the other things that, um, that you've been talking about around, you know, domain of knowledge or looms or however you want to put it, right? This is, this is interesting things to think about together. So it could be supporting teachers developing curriculum in these areas. It could be co-teaching with them. Um, and so there's just a few of the kind of sub bullets there around, you know, history and think about misinformation or current events, right? Um, and in some cases, it might be something that's can you know be used in a number of programs. So, for example, every student here does OSHA, or not every student, but most programs do OSHA training. I think every program does some sort of safety, safety training, yeah. right? Um, and so I developed a, a lesson around like the history of OSHA, which really kind of just shows that like, you know, it came out of the labor movement. And this is, this is not just some annoying government regulation thing, but this is something people fought for yeah. to try to, you know, for protections. And so I might do that, you know, program to program and different instructors will fit it in at different times. Or there might be something else where like the cosmetology teacher, for example, you know, she does a lot of equity work and she does things around um, beauty standards and things, and so I might come in and co-teach that with her, right? So it's very program specific. Um, and then when these positions are filled and we have literacy and STEAM people, like just always being very mindful that, you know, teachers have a lot of things they're trying to cover in programs, and so we can't just be like, um, so we have to be kind of leveraging already, so if, if um, opportunities they already have with students. So obviously tons of connections with literacy and STEAM, um, equity cuts across all of it. So good collaborative opportunities there. And then the last goal is around different sorts of systems change. Um, and so that's a biggie and, you know, still kind of early days. Um, but, you know, thinking about like just having a diverse student body, um, how um, students are, you know, the admissions policy here. Um, and then really the equity policy is probably the main kind of systems piece that we've been working on up to this point. So 
to talk about that a little bit. Um, so far, we've, you know, as I mentioned, worked with all teachers around kind of um, thinking about equity together, and then voluntarily, teachers have been coming together. So I think we've had five meetings up to this point. Been a good chunk of people um, giving their time voluntarily to this. Very um, in-depth conversations. Um, it's, it's been I've, I've been really impressed, and I've learned a ton from from those meetings. Um, we kind of have gotten to the point where we have identified a few areas and started delving into them um, and just on the edge of thinking about like what could a, a possible recommended wording and things like that um, look like but you know we want to hear from you about what would be helpful um, at a meeting about a month ago we we kind of took that committee's work to the full faculty and got people to weigh in that way um, and then um, I think we're at the point now too where we're uh, really starting to bring students into the conversation. Um, so even this morning uh, at the student leadership meeting, for example, we just like handed them the policy and just said, you know, first thoughts kind of thing. And just had to, uh, you know, gave some time for everybody to read and mark up, gave some time for students to chat with their neighbor about it, get the ideas flowing. Um, not sure we had to do that because there were a lot of ideas flowing and just had a very wide-ranging um, conversation. Um, and I don't know, Chase, if you want to just give a flavor of that conversation or just say yeah. anything about that. Uh, a couple weeks ago, Life approached me with this piece of paper and I was like, I don't really know what this is, Life. And he was like, this is, this is like this big thing that's happening within our community. It's this equity policy and I'm gonna bring it up to student leadership moving forward and I'd like you to take a look at it just in advance to look at it. So I read over it. I, you know, it's a lot of words, a lot of complicated <laughs> words. And, you know, I understood what it meant. And it was a little, a little strange to break it down and understand it fully. But uh, our meeting this morning was pretty um, thoughtful, I guess. I think that would be the word or explanatory between each classmate. We're very, uh, we have, uh, I think we'd have, we, I'd say we have a pretty diverse, different backgrounds, characteristics between our student leadership members mm -hmm. that it actually is very good because it brings these ideas and these takeaways that we can come together by bringing, this is our point of view, this is what we like about it, this is what's working, here's some things that are different, here's some things that we don't like. And then we have these big group discussions, and most most people would think, oh, these meetings are like, oh, you agree on it and move on. But we like dive into every little detail, yeah. trying to make it perfect, trying to perfect everything, trying to make it just good for everyone and capable for the school. So, yeah, I mean, it's good so far. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And I think what that last piece you said was just so important, right? It was like. It raised a lot of questions, right? Yeah. It was like, we got to talk about this more. I mean, students were like, can we look at policies from other districts? Like, yeah. we, we want to read more policies. I was like, wow, didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, there were instances where there were disagreements in the room. And, you know, that's, that's what it's about, yeah. right? We're trying to figure it out together. And what was really inspiring is, like, students would say, like, well, you know, from my perspective, you know, this is where my identity is, because you might recall the policy has all these kind of lists of characteristics, you know, at various points. And say, yeah, well, you know, I'm white, I'm a male, you know, I'm, I guess I have low socioeconomics, so this is kind of how this is hitting me, and then somebody else would share based on their identity, and it was just, it was a really deep, I mean, it was just, it, as, as deep as a conversation as, you know, the, the teacher meetings have been. Yeah. Um, it's people are grappling um, it's complicated stuff uh, and but you know the kind of quick takeaways from the student meeting were um, you know let's it, it can't be this jargony like if we really want people to engage with it you know other students they were saying but I think it would probably apply to community members as well and probably many teachers like it's got to be a bit more plain language um, so that was really powerful um, and just trying to you know the conversations that you all have as well like where is that line between policy and procedure and you know how do we be um, get that right grain size of detail so I think that's something the board will be able to help this group with 
Um, and it echoed a lot of the, this is my last slide, but um, what the, the staff have kind of identified as these different areas that need like a little bit more thinking, a little bit more work and possible revision, just the general kind of how the whole thing is framed and how equity is defined, um, thinking more carefully about what culturally res res responsive um, practices actually look like. The admissions process is certainly a un unique thing to CBCC that doesn't show up in this policy, which you know, came from uh, former school district and also the, the model policy that's used throughout the state. So thinking about that is a very specific thing. And then family engagement is not mentioned anywhere in there, and that's mm -hmm. another area. So the plan at this point then is to continue the conversation with students, probably running parallel to continuing conversation with staff, possibly bringing them together at some point. Mm -hmm and starting to kind of like wordsmith a little bit if that's what the board is looking for and then have some kind of proposed, there probably be both some general recommendations and offering some language that you could pull from or adapt um, if that's something that you're interested in. So I'm open to questions and, um, and or direction. Um, Guy? You're still muted, Guy. Sorry. Uh, you know, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your work. Uh, you know, quick question in terms of, is there an opportunity for the board to weigh in on any of these discussions or are we just gonna get recommendations? And the reason I ask that is because, you know, part of our main role as board members is to develop policy. And so part of developing policy is listening to constituencies, uh, but also to probably give feedback. So that's my question. I mean, from my standpoint, it's however you all want, to, want it to play out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm totally open to, to whatever. I mean, part of um, one of my assumptions, which I should check with you, is that there's no like super big hurry on this. Like I think the process itself is important. And so, um, yeah, if you want to have check-ins back with more substance, if you want people to come, whether it's students and or staff, um, to have conversations with you partway through, I'm open to whatever. And I guess, I guess my other follow-up question is, are we looking for a new revised model policy, you know, statewide or locally? Just locally. Just locally, okay. It might become a model. We, we do have a policy audit coming up, so we're going to contract with VSBA to um, do an audit of our policies, and then the, the board will work through those recommendations. Um, and so I think that we do have time because of that. This board doesn't have a policy committee. It is the policy committee. So we haven't had a lot of time to really focus on policies. Right, and you've been trying to catch up with all the... Right. We've been approving existing lot, policies yeah. and maybe making, <laughs> making some changes. Yeah. And, you know, as we go along. I yeah. think I saw the list of policies yeah, you're looking at this yeah, meeting. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should also say that Life is a board member at Harwood Uni Unified Union School District, so he does understand how boards work as well. <laughs> yep. And we're talking about. Uh, revising or actually creating we don't have one yet uh an equity policy ourselves in the spring so this process has been incredibly informative it's interesting because you're really talking about the different sub communities that exist within the queer and tech center mm. and how they determine their sense of belonging and then how it gets broader to the other areas of focus mm -hmm. and then you bring in all the constituents and you try and create this huge sense of culturally responsive practices that mm -hmm. promote belonging and equity. Right and I think you know this morning we were even seeing like 
students grappling with these you know various levels which you know one you could talk about like interpersonal yeah. equity right just like being cool to other human beings in the right. moment and then there's the the systemic or institutional equity and that that one's like really hard to get your head around you know and students were calling attention to the current one that points out you know the difference between equity and equality mm -hmm. saying this this you know this policy means that some students or even groups will get more resources and mm -hmm. Um, the notion that fair is not equal. Mm -hmm. It's a different notion of yeah. fairness, and it's, you know, it can, it can make a lot of sense, and, and mm -hmm. often when you're getting into the details and the concrete, you're like, geez, is that fair, though? That seems really weird. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're somebody who has characteristics where you're not necessarily going to get more resources or attention, so. Um, well, we'll give everyone a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> um, are we the only... Like, are we the only school that you're actively working in, and have you worked in a yes. career center before, or is this? No, no, this is my first time. Okay. Yeah, my, um, for the last eight or nine years, I was working with middle schools throughout oh, wow. Vermont. So it's been an interesting journey. Uh, I was employed by UVM, and I'd be working with multiple schools at once. Um, so I've worked with quite a few middle schools in the state. But many of the things we were trying to do, you know, student-centered learning, and many of the things that we are trying to help middle schools create space for engagement, it's just like this place is just the, the promised land for that stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Providing students, you know, purpose around something they have a passion in. Um, and so I'm seeing many of the theories we had like really playing out in real time that like, yes, the sense of belonging and the community and the success and just, you know, the cycles of virtue that can happen when kids are engaged and it's, it's really happening here. It's That's a beautiful awesome. thing. Yeah. Have you seen the ways. surveys that went out and the responses that we were talking about earlier? Yep. Because it really is like this huge banner for how great the career te and tech center is. It, I mean, I, I told the staff this is the other day. Um, you know, the student responses. You know, I'm, I'm very data driven. I've done lots of surveys in lots of different places. The student responses are just something you just do not see in schools. Yeah like to see um, literally almost no, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of pressures on people and you're usually gonna have students or pockets of students who are just like, I don't like my teacher, you know, it's a very natural kind of occurrence and like to just see almost virtually none of that across the student body is just incredible. Yeah, the, the you know, I've found that working with the teachers here, you know, all the things that you imagine and the good things that you would hope for are actually true. Like, they're just good people. They're really, really good at what they do. And they're open to learning. You know, they're, they're students first. So even as things that challenges their own beliefs, they're like, okay, let's keep talking about it. Let's keep thinking about it. You know, the people who show up at this voluntary meeting are not, you know, people who walk around in their lives saying, I'm all about equity. Right, but there are people who are all about the students, and yes. so they want to work on it and think about it together, even if it's uncomfortable and challenging to them at times. It's That's been incredible. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Guy, you have a question? Yeah, just a just a comment again. You know, appreciate work. I, you know, as a as a board member, my bias is towards gender equity and racial equity. Uh, which, you know, slash in Vermont is probably a little difficult, but, you know, certainly gender equity in our programs is important to me, you know. Um, you know, male, female in programs, I mean, if you look at our, uh, you know, enrollment stuff, I mean, clearly, uh, you know, different programs are enrolled with, you know, different genders, and so how can we, you know, you know, fix that or improve it. Um, so that's my, you know, personal bias and interest. But you know, it sounds like you're, you know, leading up to that. Absolutely, and I, you know, I think um, it's complicated. But thinking about like what what does that really mean? And I think often, you know, the case is thinking about equality of opportunity, and you know students uh you know regardless of gender are feeling you know sense of belonging in programs um and so how that how you measure that how that looks in data i think that's a another um 
complicated question. You know, I think the current policy kind of, I think it's almost like the last thing it says to it's, you know, and the board shall figure out how to measure all this stuff. You know, good luck. <laughs> like, um, and I, I'm not sure anybody's really has a really coherent system around that right now, but this is how we do it. We muddle through and we eventually operationalize and then we'll be able to, to gather the data. So. Uh, Sonia. Uh, thanks. Um, so just to piggyback on what Guy was just saying, I think that um, it seems like um, part of that work, that equity work is going to come from, going to have to happen at sending schools because those are the places where, um, you know, they're encouraging students to apply and become interested and, um, and, and maybe in the promotional materials that we send out as well. But it, it seems like there might need to be some work in those other districts, including our own, to make sure that we're being equitable in, in providing opportunities for everybody in our school for all the programs. That's a great point. Yep. At a minimum, when, when we're fun, finished, we could we could all take it back and share it with our yeah. boards. Yeah. yeah. Um, so going back to that timeline, when does when does it make sense for the board to have you back or have you know, students and staff back? Or um, I mean, it really depends on you know when your timeline is to try to want to have like final um, recommendations. Okay. So if you want to do sort of an interim touch base, mm -hmm. um, as Guy was suggesting, um, you know I can see that happening sort of later in the spring. For okay. the school year, um, I mean, I I think that you know I'm I'm willing to see this process go on as long as you all are because it's it's an incredible way to drive conversations, right? It's like instead of just coming in and being like, hey, let's all talk about and learn about equity, like that's happening and that's you're going to generate some energy around that. But to say like, and we're going to see an outcome here, because again, like some of the stuff sounds good in the abstract, and they're like, well, how how do we actually write this down on paper now? Okay, that like gets to a whole nother level of conversation. Mm -hmm. So yeah, again, then, I'm open to. And then how do you implement it? Because you have different students coming in every year, and so what's what's the practice? You know, Absolutely, it's yeah. it's never it doesn't end. Yep. Any other board members have any questions? For life? or Chase, or Jody? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I really That's appreciate great. your time. It's great, great to meet you all. I really, oh, I tell you, it's a dream, oh absolute dream job. Yeah, so cool. And, you know, I, I'm sure you all know because you work with her. But, um, you know, Jody is like a huge reason why I took this leap and wow. this job where, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's so responsive, we'll figure it out along the way. Mm -hmm around this topic that's already complicated and gets, you know, brings a lot of emotion into it oftentimes. Mm -hmm. um, but we just, you know, have been working, we meet every week and we talk through issues from the tiny, you know, one or two people trying to interact to these big systemic things. And it's been amazing. It has. Appreciate it. I'm so glad to hear the level of student involvement too. And like, um, that the conversations can so easily be open and honest and clear and proactive and you know we're sometimes talking about this in with adults in our in our day jobs and right. some folks are pretty like hesitant to sort of have those conversations so it's great yeah. to hear that that's happening. I mean you know it's a great age for it right they're mm -hmm. like really understanding society starting to understand society they're you know, playing with their beliefs and trying to understand the world. They're still super hopeful. They don't have the cynicism. They're ready to change the world if they can. Um, but again, all the foundations of success, like what goes on in these programs, I mean, I'll say, I see Steph here, but you know, the Expo program is just proof positive. I mean, mm -hmm. students there are just, you know, they're doing, you know, all the hands-on learning that you often associate, and they're doing like incredible intellectual stuff as well. Mm -hmm. So the, many of those students are coming out into the programs, right? And so when they're feeling successful in the programs, they're ready to take intellectual risks and be able to really like grapple with this stuff. And 
that. So it's it's a it's a really unique combination. And, yeah. And this and the sense of respect that they must all feel, you know, that they are respected, that your voice is powerful, and that together they can build. Absolutely. That's great voice. And you know, as a as a teacher, when I'm in there teaching them and I'm with their program instructor. Um, it's just unbelievable when you know we're dealing with some you know kind of hard truths, and they're like looking over the program instructor, really, and they're like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, and they're they're participating, and we're co-teaching together, and that's somebody that's who they have you know 100% respect for. Yep. It sounds <clears throat> like it was pretty easy to integrate this work with your teachers' professional development and instruction time, and the students having that time. Was that a challenge to like? literally fit that into the day? I don't feel like it was. No. no. Um, Guy? Yeah, the, um, you know, as we struggle to try to continue to involve students and, you know, policy making and boards and, you know, as they're busy and, you know, blah, 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 I really appreciate the fact that you've opened up an opportunity for students to be involved, which is incredibly important because you know, they don't often get a chance to get involved in policy development. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's good to hear from them. So thank you. And thank you. I appreciate that. And just um, last thing, I do want to just give a huge shout out to Abby Allen, the, um, the counselor, mm -hmm. because she's, um, you know, I'm kind of co-facilitating with her, but really she's leading the, the student leadership stuff. And so she's created a great, right, Chase? Yeah. Yeah, she's created a great environment for kids these students to really be thriving in that student leadership role. And she's just been lauded, so she's a star here, right? <laughs> Definitely. Great. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank so you. much for having me. Yeah. Good luck with the rest of your meeting. I think late spring sounds like a good plan because summer can really, it's hard to get us all together and concentrating in the summer, it feels like, so. Totally. Just to check in while it's while we're all actively participating yeah. in the school year. And as the school year ends, we're in reflective mode and looking towards next year, so we'll pick it up from there. And, that sounds great. And also, if you want to bring, you know, <clears throat> more students. students with you. I'll try. You know, <laughs> good. Chase great. keeps trying. He yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> great. Thank awesome. you. Thank Thanks you. again. Thanks, Chase. Thank you. Hi, Chase. Thank yeah, thank you. you. So nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> Appreciate it. Appreciate all you do. <clears throat> All right, board members. Then we have an, uh, our next item on our agenda is um, the final reading of several of our remaining policies for their um, final read. Um, I don't know if anyone has any particular comments. I think, Guy, you had a question about um, 2.4.10. Um, it's recommended on here that we remove that as we do not provide health education. Um, I think Jody had an explanation for that one. That we share a school nurse, I think? Yeah. Okay. Does that, does that mean that there are no condoms available? At there the are okay. available, and okay. we do share the Spalding okay. nurse. Nurses. All right. Where is it in here? I, Go ahead. Okay, I had a question about 18 year old students mm -hmm. um i have to find it is it in here or should i try and get it on my yeah. at any rate it talks about the 18 year old student who can decide whether or not they want their parent there or not but then it goes on to say but we have to contact the parent and make sure that it's okay with the parent and it just seemed ambivalent to me so i'm just wondering what, what, you know. When a student turns 18, they can fill out a form that gives them uh, sole information and their parent signs off on it. Oh, so that's the contacting the parent, okay. Yeah. So what if the parent doesn't sign off on it? Does that take the voice away from the 18 year old that wants to represent themselves? The materials themselves? still go to the parents, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Whether they agree or not. Okay, that was what I was wondering. That's what I was reading. Thank you. Um, 
Go ahead, Sonia. Thanks. I have a question about um, the policy for uh, C42 searches, seizures, interrogation of students by law enforcement personnel or other non school personnel. Um, under school property, because you're not a traditional school, are there other things that maybe we should inc include in that list? Or should we say includes but is not limited to student lockers, desks, textbooks, and materials? Because I'm assuming there's a lot of other things that are considered student property in a career and tech center. I think most of it is covered under materials loan to students, because if I think about the toolbox that they might have um, access to an automotive or the uh, pouch of tools that they might have in building trades, it's still the materials that are loaned to students while they're in the program. Okay. Is there are there are, are those the only? I'm thinking about like lockers or cubbies or other areas where that are maybe not traditional in the way that you know Spalding High School is. No, nothing like that. Okay. We we do have lockers. Some of them right in the hallway, just like Spalding. Um, some yeah. in program. We have right outside of baking and culinary arts, for example. There's those lockers, but. We don't really have anything that's not the same for them to store okay. stuff. Okay. Um, that was my one curiosity. And then um, I think I had one more question. <clears throat> um, and I think it's just about, I think we took um, something out and the sentence doesn't make sense. What, which policy, Sonia? Sorry, I was getting there. It's under budgeting. It's F30. So under approval, it says the budget and special articles will be presented by the board for approval by the electorate on town meeting day. CVCCSD preparation of the board's budget presentation and other board strategies for explaining and supporting its budget will be a formal agenda item at a meeting of the board prior to the annual district meeting. The beginning of that sentence is a, is a lot, so I'm not sure if we can break that down. I'm not sure exactly what it's trying to say. It's a bit confusing and wordy, but if you look at the next page, we took out a part of that sentence, and so I think that, I, I don't know, I just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, so. We could take out preparation of the, and it could be the CBCC SD board's budget presentation and other board strategies for explaining and supporting its budget will be a formal agenda item at a meeting of the board prior to the annual district yeah. meeting. Okay. Yep, that sounds good. So we're, we're striking preparation. I'm putting a the to start the sentence right in front of CBCC SD. And I'm removing or striking preparation of the between CBCC, SD, and the boards. Okay. And then everything else remains. Correct. Okay. Um, I think those are all my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for the close read. Yeah. Did any other board members have any particular um, policies? I think with an edit like that, can we still pass it for yep. third reading with those edits? Okay. Yep. Great. All right. And forgive me, are we, should we do these as a group? Slate. As a slate of policies? I will read them into the record still um, if nobody has any further questions. Um, and before we... Before we do that, um, between you mentioned the VSBA um, policy audit, like what would be an ideal time for the board to really take the equity policy mm -hmm. to the board level for like discussion and approval? Is that like a next fall thing? Is that a? I think the discussion can happen in a follow up meeting. We can have discussion and then continue discussion and approval in the fall is fine. Okay. Because we have life through the end of next school year. Is that 
we have him as long as we can oh. fit him in our Perkins budget. Got it. Which is, okay. because of the role, that could be something we continue in perpetuity mm -hmm. <laughs> in Perkins, and equity is a strong component of Perkins. That's awesome. Yeah. That was really neat to hear. I, I mean, maybe not a surprise to us, but also really lovely to hear about the sense of community and participation the students have yeah. here. That's so different from a typical high school experience. Yeah. And to have someone with his perspective yeah. acknowledge so that great. was pretty cool. Driven by passion. Yeah, passion and um, guy. Go ahead. Yeah, so my recommendation on that would be to, uh, you know, lean on Jody and, and you know, have her recommend to us when when that is ready because it sounds like you know she's going to be working very closely with it and um you know go from there okay all right so i will read into the record the policies that we're um pre presenting for final reading uh, we have the role and adoption of school board policies board member education, school visits by board members, board relations with school personnel, student medication, 18-year-old students, student assessment, restraint and seclusion, search seizures and interrogation of students by law enforcement personnel or other non-school personnel, and we are recommending removal of the sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy prevention education policy as we share a school nurse with the high school. Uh, policy on field trips, policy on selecting library materials, selection of instructional materials, school community relations, budgeting, HIV policy, and scholarship award policy. Do I have a motion to approve those policies? Sonia? Um, can I just ask clarification uh, on the um, sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy prevention? We also um, use, for like example, the selecting library materials, the, the students for CVCC use the Spalding Library. Would we not keep the sexually transmitted infections and pregnancy prevention education policy and just do it the same way that we've done the library materials policy? You could. Um, Guy? Yeah, I guess that's where I was heading on my question. Uh, okay. Since we have an involvement and since we continue to, you know, try to plant, you know, expand the career center uh, I, would, I would say we keep it but you know I don't want to I don't want to arm wrestle anybody over it I think that's fine if there's not in the I, line I think we'll we'll have to replace it at some point anyway or we'll have to have it so we if we keep it mm -hmm. then we don't yeah, need we to rewrite it down the road mm -hmm. okay. 2028 right any objection to keeping that on our list of policies for now? Sonia? Sorry. Sonia? Another question. So so this policy says that the the district is going to provide a STI and pregnancy prevention education program that is integrated into the health curriculum, which we do not provide, correct? Mm -hmm. So correct. That, that would be provided by sending schools, I'm assuming? Maybe. It does, yes. All of our sending schools have this policy and provide that because they provide health curriculum. Right. So should we, should we table this particular um, policy and just revise it to reflect that that is coming from the sending schools and that the nurse part of it is through our partnership with Spalding? That makes sense. Okay, so I'll make that motion to table that until okay. another time and we can um, revise it and, and bring it back around. Okay, thank you. 
You're you're good, Sonia. Yeah, she's really good. You're really good. Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second, I'll second that. From Guy. All right. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Aye. We will table that policy policy C forty three to make those updates. All right, and then do I have a motion to um, approve the remaining policies? So moved, Guy. Thanks, Guy. Do you have a second? I'll second it, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so we have adopted those policies exclusive of C43. And I'm just seeing on the agenda, it looks like there might be a sub-policy under the scholarship award. Um, there's not a sub-policy. It was a list of scholarships, and oh. I provided it at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, at the I think Guy requested That's that right. previously. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, next up, we will move on to our um, various committee reports. So uh, we are looking for an update from the Finance Committee. And it looks like we do have a um, an MOU with Habitat for Humanity to consider for board action. And I know Flora couldn't make it. I think I missed three quarters of that meeting. I apologize. Um, do you want to explain what this is again? Is this for the, um, the community loan fund? Okay. So um, the MOU that was in the packet is our version of a memorandum of understanding with Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity to collaborate for use of com community loan fund resources that require um, CTE participation. And so there were some questions that came out of the committee and I did share them with um, Zach, who's the representative from Habitat for Humanity. He was able to answer all of them and I believe that the answers were exactly what the committee was looking for as far as who holds the money, who's going to check on um, where the money's going and all of that. So there is a process for that. So this is meant for us to partner with them to work on the 22 Hill Street home that will be starting to be built on in April. And so the next step, once we've agreed to this, is for the application to go in for that loan um, so that Habitat for Humanity can work on that house. They've already taken down the one that was there. They have some folks who have applied for the home and they're looking to partner with us so that our students can learn from the process and also they can potentially hire on some additional supports through the summer from our student body. Nice. So it's a few different programs probably. Yeah, so our building trades, plumbing and heating, and electrical students will be involved in the That's project great. this spring and then next year's students as well. Awesome. Does anybody have any questions? Yep, Guy? Yeah, quick question. Uh, obviously, I'm super jacked about this because I go by there every day, so I'm going to be able to see the progress. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, when I was reading the document, um, is this something we would have legal overview of or do yeah. we need legal overview? We so, did. Okay. Yeah, so this was actually based off of an MOU that is already existing between the same Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity and Randolph Technical Career Center. They are already involved in a project together. And so we took their MOU and sent it to Chris Leopold for his advice. We did take out one component of it that we didn't think was legal or in compliance, and we added in the background check. So those are the two changes from the existing MOU that Randolph has with uh, Habitat on a project they're currently doing. Thank you, Lynn. We can see the ton of publicity about that project. Yes. Is it a single family residence? Yes. Okay. It's, gonna, it's a stick built home for Hill Street. Okay. Any other questions? Sonia? 
Yes, on the last page, um, number nine, it there's a blank space there for a date. Do we have a date for that? We we don't right now. Um, we will fill that in if the board is okay with us moving forward to do that. Is it is the projection for it to be completed? Um, you said next year's students as well, so it wouldn't be. It's going to be completed in the spring of 25, I believe. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Would, these, would the kids that work on it be in the regular program, or would they be co-op students, or? Yes. Okay. Perfect. That means all of the above? Yeah. Um, do we have a motion to enter in this uh, memorandum of understanding with Habitat for Humanity for the community loan fund work? Oh, I'll move. Thank you, Jana. Do I have a second? I'll second. Guy. Thanks, Guy. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. And it, it, are you signing on behalf of the board? Okay. So we'll ask our superintendent to um, enter the MOU on, on the behalf of the district. Okay. Great. Um, oh, another news in our finance. Uh, you know, town meeting day is less than a week away. <laughs> I got my it's card. It's more than a week away. Not a week, a month. Gosh, yeah. <laughs> got our, um, the materials have all gone out. Yes. Um, ballots have been delivered. Delivered. Um, Great, thank you. Um, Guy? Oh, I hate to be a the fly in the ointment, but mm -hmm. based on the uh, discussions of the legislature in terms of moving up uh, voting dates, is that going to affect us at all? And what do we need to do about that? that so it is. That was a point of discussion at the, the meeting as well. And at the finance committee, we didn't know what our sending schools are doing. Right now, it looks like everyone's going to go forward with their town meeting day vote. So I don't think that we're going to have that kind of impact. But we do want to make sure that we're getting information out about ours being separate and um, that folks where it is. Like, it's a separate ballot item. but already embedded in everybody's um, budgets and if they approve our budget regardless of whether the other budgets go down that is something each of our sending schools is required to pay if it's approved mm -hmm. so i'm working on an op-ed to go out both front porch forum and times argus and i shared it uh, today with jill floor and lyman to just take a look at and anyone else who wants to add to that um, I'm happy to share it with all of you it's not a secret so the other the other devil, devil's advocate piece is that there could be some districts who vote postpone would we still be on the ballot or not we uh, have, we have our own ballot guy so our ballots are separate from all the other schools and it's if ours is approved in those co-mingled votes then by law every district has to pay our tuition okay so what you're saying is the change would not affect us necessarily uh and the vote will continue forward but you know that i think it's going to be very confusing for some people who you know who don't know what are we voting on you know true are there school budgets that aren't going to be voted on? Well, the legislature is still working on and hoping to pass soon something that allows boards to postpone their right. budget vote so that they have figure more time. Out. Right. And so, like for example, at Montpelier, at last at our meeting last week, we discussed it ad nauseum and decided yeah. we were going to go ahead with the budget yeah. we had finalized because there were still so many unknowns. Yeah. And it could still change and then the yield also doesn't get set till may so 
it's still kind of a shot in the dark for some of the districts, but there, I think the idea is there were some districts in Vermont, not necessarily among our cohort, mm -hmm. um, that had really put a lot more into their budget because of that 5% cap, yep. and now that cap's gone, right. so they're, they do have to yep. make some more serious yep. cuts. So I think that's why the legislature opened that up. Okay. And I think also the timeline has canceling your vote, you have to rewarn the next one. They want it to be, right. if, if your first vote has to be done by April 15th, there's a really short window mm -hmm. during the February break t for the board to, to change the budget, rewarn it, approve it, rewarn it, and get it out there. Whereas if you go ahead with the town meeting day, mm -hmm. if it gets voted down, every vote after that is a two week warning window mm -hmm. instead of 30 days. Okay. And so Good. it makes sense to just move forward and there's more we get the feedback it. from from the folks in the yeah. community first before you yep. shift Good. it. That makes sense. Yeah. But you're right, guy. It's been a confusing budget year, and I don't want our ballots to get become collateral damage as folks are angry at boards and the legislature and everybody. Um, so I think that op-ed is a great idea. I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to look at it, but it is on my, it's okay. my list. But good okay. idea. Um, okay. We will move on to the facilities committee discussion, which has some exciting stuff in it. And we should have um, some folks, either they already joined us or will soon be joining us from Truex Colleen oh, nice. and LaValle Center. Nice. And there was a good deal of information hey. in our packet. Oh, hi, David. Yay. Thank you. And Lance, hello. Yeah. Welcome. Hi, everyone. How, how is everybody doing? Good, thank Good. you. Thanks for being here. Look at that timing, too. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, perfect, huh? Right on schedule. <laughs> All right, so do we want to hand it over to these Terry? folks, or was there anything else? Is Terry? Yeah, I mean, you, I apologize. I'm not feeling well, so it's hard for me to talk without coughing. So if I start coughing, bear with me. Um, so the proposal is attached to the budget, uh, to the um, meeting uh, packet, um, also from Truex Collins in La Valley, Bresnier. But um, we did invite David and Lance to join us because uh, Sonia did have some spe specific questions that I think we had put in an email to you, David. And then we just wanted to make sure that anybody else on the board if they had questions or just want to chat about something in particular that David and Lance would be here to answer those questions. Great, thank you. So David, did you send back answers in the email? I, well, I don't remember seeing. Uh, I, I, well, I did send back answers to um one email but i'm not sure if there was a second email uh jody sent me an email with a bunch of questions in it and i sent back yep. um responsive to that is that the one we're speaking about it is okay um they were there was uh did you get did everybody get those responses or um, yeah, do you want me to go no. through those yeah that would be great if you wouldn't mind Okay. Um, let me just go to that one second here. The um, there was a question about fixed fees, and um, and versus hourly, and the fixed fees are are when we say fixed fees, those are fixed. Those um, those in a fixed fee. A portion of the um, contract, we bill those as a percent complete, and those don't change unless unless the scope of work changes. You know, if we um, or the, or the schedule, so um, those are locked in. Then the hourly fees are estimates. Um, we did get consultants' input to develop those estimates. Um, we included hourly fees for um, phases that where it's pretty hard to nail down the scope, like the site selection. Um, 
it's hard to know are we looking at you know five sites three sites two sites one site and so it's it's just not possible to put a fixed fee amount for that portion of the work similarly the community outreach piece some projects were asked to come to every single meeting and present other projects um, the facilities committee does many of the public meetings on their own um, so there's also some things like some some clients want one rendering for um, the project some want three or four and so it's difficult to price those until we get to that portion of the work so um, those are the two the two kinds that's and that's why we propose some of the phases to be fixed and some of them um, to be hourly now there are some some costs that we didn't cover in our estimates like legal costs for example um, so when you're dealing with a land acquisition you can imagine you're going to want a lawyer um, and so um, so that so that's and and we could we could help you you know give you some general ideas i know lance you've had experience with that in the past on other projects if that would be helpful um there was a question about the project contingency listed in the terms and conditions um the, that project contingency is really referring to the project contingency at construction time um and it has to do with change orders however it is a really good idea like our our proposal all in was three hundred and ten thousand. um there are some additional costs like i mentioned like legal costs there could you know there could be additional sites that we're not aware of and so it's always good to have uh, you know a contingency fund as an owner at any portion of a project for those unknown circumstances. Hey, David, I think the question. And then, was, uh, I think the question on the contingency was more around what's the recommendation, like ten percent. Yeah. 10%? Well, I I put I put ten to fifteen percent for this portion of the project uh, in my response. Um, okay. It it it's really um, it's difficult to say. Lance, do you have any thoughts on that? Are we talking about the contingency beyond the three hundred and ten thousand? Are you talking about contingency? Yeah. For construction. No, so we're talking about during I mean, pre, I, just pre bond. I think pre bond. I would say yeah, fifteen percent contingency plus the legal fee. I think the legal fee. If you speak with your lawyer um, and how much you know, they would cost, usually most projects we've kind of marched in with about 20,000 in legal fees as an allowance to have them draw up a purchase and sale agreement with an owner that's contingent upon several factors. Um, usually I think that's a healthy allowance. There's also the other, um, potential cost is a, a good faith deposit to hold the property um, you know once once we find a property negotiate with the landlord you know you're not going to want to buy well I don't know but typically you won't don't buy the land till the bond vote passes but you you often have to put some money down to hold the land um, until the bond vote so that would be I mean Lance, you were saying some projects that's not required, but some projects it is. Right. Some so, some sites. Yeah, we've been. I've been part of a few projects purchasing land. Um, some projects, if you have somebody who's really does want to sell to you, they want their property to become a school. Their friends, their friends of your program, they may say we're, we're happy to sell to you. It may not even be on the market. But we're happy to sell to you without you paying us up front, we want fair value. And we're willing to hold it until a bond vote. And if you pass, we'll let you buy it. Other property that we've been was actually for sale. And we negotiated both an end cost with them and then a fee to hold it. Um, so we ended up paying, I think about 50,000 to hold it for a year and a half. 
and they kept the price locked at that time. So we essentially had a an agreement in place that could be executed upon passing a bond vote. That's owner by owner. They may, I mean, if it's actively on the market, I would think any owner would ask you to put a, like anything, put at least some deposit down to hold the property. Um, and we'll be asking them to hold it for quite a bit of time, you know, and contingent upon passing a bond vote. And then we may even, if you fail potentially one year bond vote, you may say, is there an option to extend by one year for an additional fee? The, um, you know, I'm looking through the responsibility matrix, which is a, a kind of a nice way to check this the scope. And the other piece that um, we have budgeted in the estimate under community outreach, the, our time to travel, uh, to go to Maine for, uh, you know, to, uh, see other projects, but we don't have, I didn't compute like if, if there's hotels or, you know, if we stay in overnight, um, hotels, mileage, things like that. So if, if you're thinking about taking a whole group to Maine and Lance, it'd probably be an, probably be an overnight involved, right? Um, or could you do it in a day, you think? Uh, for the centers, I mean, I think you're probably looking at four or five hours, one direction. So you can do it in a day, but it'll be a yeah. long day. <laughs> so um, I think if you wanted to see two centers, you know, you get over there, you spend a couple hours at each center, middle part of your day. If you start early and end late, you can do it without an overnight. It kind of depends on your yeah. day. I think there's a couple centers in New Hampshire, too, that might be worthwhile seeing, or we may decide... You know, there's different groups going to different projects. Like a few people want to look at, you know, these types of programs, and that's the best center for them. And another group goes to these types of programs and compare notes after. And you know, we can we can help you. Uh, we often work with owners to set up a project budget with all these line items, with all the you know fixed fees. Um, estimates we can put plug numbers in for some of these other things and then um, often what happens is we set up the spreadsheet and then the owner manages it because you're going to have costs we're not going to be aware of so that you can keep track of um, the different costs um, the other questions there was just a, a, a the mileage rate was uh, I had incorrectly put 65 cents. It's actually uh, 67 cents now is the federal rate. Um, I sent an uh, I sent Jody an updated uh, rate sheet with that on it. And then um, as far as our hourly rates, you know, we adjust them on a every on a yearly basis. So they're they're locked in for 2024. Um, sometimes they go up. Sometimes they don't. Um, every year and on the hourly portions of the project we would charge whatever the current hourly rate is um, for that year the fixed the fixed um, fixed fee phases wouldn't wouldn't they're fixed they wouldn't they wouldn't change and I think that's the questions that we had are there other questions that uh, folks have I guess I'd, I'll ask, what, what do you folks need from us next? What's the next step? So um, the next step would be, I could, um, I don't know if I put a place, let me just check the proposal itself. Sometimes I put a um, place to sign as an authorization to proceed. Let's see if I did that. Um, yeah, so you, you know, an authorized representative basically just needs to sign the proposal, uh, send it back, and then we're we're good to go. And we'll, we'll start, um, you know, the schedule that we have put in the proposal is a very macro schedule. We'll start to um, build one that's a little more detailed. Um, I was talking with Lance earlier, and, you know, we're, 
we're looking at getting started sometime in March is when we would be able to mobilize our forces. Um, but there's plenty of, you know, we don't see that as a, a big issue because in the schedule, the there's a fair amount of time in the so-called community outreach bar that we can, we can um, drift into that if we have to. Um, and and I one thing I wanted to point out was in the the way we had grossly simplified the that gra the the schedule just f to make it simple. Um, but clearly there will be community outreach throughout the whole project. Um, it won't just you know we're not going to go into a black box design find a site design a building and then you know uh, start presenting it to the um, to the public there's there will be a lot of check-ins and opportunity to get input from the community um, all throughout the process yeah I like I mean I think the community is going to want to know even just sharing an overall schedule like this with them about here's the steps we're about to go through it'd be great to either if you have that on your social media or if you have a website set up specifically for the project just start putting information out there I think your educators also are going to want to know the overall schedule. When can they expect to be involved? Um, they're going to have a fair amount of anxiety going in if they're not informed as to when will I be asked for my input? Um, what are my deadlines? All of that. So let's start. Uh, yeah, I think one. Go ahead. Yeah. Go. No, no, go ahead, Lance. So to me, you know, if we start with, you know, a little bit more detailed schedule with them, particularly that planning phase, which we had kind of the first six months share that with them maybe with a kickoff meeting and you know just start putting if you're agreeable to the overall schedule start putting that together in detail with you guys as to when people are available and when it makes sense to engage your staff and everybody do you one question i have is um do you have a um you have a um this is the board that we're speaking with now and then is there a specific facilities committee uh designated for this project um and does it have representation from the different stakeholder groups that uh, uh, are affected by the project in other words is there a representative from faculty administration facilities so on and so forth um because that's often a uh you know what we usually like to have is a you know a facilities committee that's a stakeholders group and then a smaller executive committee that we can we can kind of strategize with in terms of next steps so that might be you know uh jody and terry and you know you know a small group maybe four people five people at the most so that would be something to think about is you know in terms of getting organized um how you how how who's going to be on those committees so that when we're ready to get started um we know who to meet with and you know who's going to meet with us yeah that's a great idea yeah I, mean, I think we already have our smaller facilities committee we don't have the larger with the stakeholders brought into the conversation so yeah that's something we need to talk right. about and then you know what we'll do is what we'll, we'll want to know like which of the um i think in the last go around they're called PACs, right Pro advisory committees um yeah, each for program each has a lab type yep so you guys each you have a pack set up for every program right now yeah we're calling them advisory boards but we do have yes okay. Um, are there, and then one of the questions we had, are there any programs that we're proposing that don't exist now in which you would have to assemble a new advisory board? Yes. Okay. So that's, that'll be one of your items that we're happy to meet with any group that you can put together, share experience we have working with different lab types, but ultimately someone's got to give us the information to kind of shape the way you envision those programs coming online. Great. Which is not, as you know, a small lift trying to get everybody together. Yeah, and there were there were also some the last go around there were some 
exploratory, you know, there were sort of like TBDs uh, labs, like wanting to plan, knowing that flex. we don't know. Yeah, flex, whatever you want to call it. They, you, you know, you, you don't know what you don't know yet. And so, but you want to plan because you know programs will be coming online in the next uh, few years that it might be technology that's not even invented, like an AI lab, right? Or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah. So yeah. we'll have to, somebody will have to speak to somebody who, do you have somebody, a group with a crystal ball? That would be very helpful. <laughs> Is that you, Jody? You got the crystal ball? All right. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I love I it. That was you, David. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I keep listening to these podcasts that keep telling me that AI is coming and like the train has left the station and like you better hop on or get out of the way. And I, I, I keep wondering how that's going to affect CTE and well, all of our, yeah. all the work we do. Every career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there any other questions from any board members just, or anything the facilities crew wanted to bring our attention to? I had a quick question. Um, Lyman and then Guy? Um, just on the, uh, the 310,000 plus uh, the contingencies, that would take us up through just part of this, right? It would take us through the, on your schedule, end of 2025 is that right yeah let me let me just take a look at that um it takes you right up to bonvo doesn't it david yeah right up to bonvo which right now is right 20 the end of november 2025. okay so for our budget purposes, yeah. we need to budget right that much for that yeah. okay Thank you. Uh, Guy? Yep. Yeah, I just want to thank David and Lance for uh, you know, the presentation, uh, number one. And number two is uh, thank you for giving us some eye candy. Uh, I've got <laughs> to be honest with you. I'm one of those people that, you know, that uh, well, I'll date myself, but, you know, when the career center first started, it had just had started. So, I've, I've got some skin in the game here. I'm, I'm a little, um, but anyway, uh, you know, I'm excited about this project. And the last thing I will say is I think Miss Steele is not running again for uh, her position. And I just want to put in a plug for her to uh, maybe, I think, maybe get a write-in candidate for her. Uh, write -in, uh, ballot for her. Uh, you know, she's done a fabulous job with us, and I would like to see her stay with us. And uh, I'll shut up. <laughs> Glad you brought that up, Guy. Thank you. Terry, can we twist your arm? I don't know. Three years is a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could be a community member, too, on this well, larger. That's yeah, yeah. Right. I, that up. I would be glad to continue to help with this particular project as a community member. Great, thank you. Well, we, we just want to say thank you for selecting uh, our team. We're, we are really thrilled to be working with you folks. You know, both, both Lance and I, both our companies have worked with you in the past and I think Together, we're we're sort of the, the the dream team, if you will, in terms of you okay. know the local represent uh, you know the local firm and uh, the CTE experts. So I think you're you're in good hands, and um, we're just really excited because this is such an important project and such a long time coming. Um, so we just gotta do a good job and get the word out to all the all the the towns, and hope they agree. Yeah, this project I think has the potential to be absolutely amazing. I mean, there's there's so much potential in the CT realm, and and Vermont mm -hmm. needs it. You know, they need extraordinary CT centers, um, absolutely, and particularly this area. You know, we we loved working with it before. Um, this will be this will be fun. Really looking forward to it.
I'm so glad. It is. It's really yeah, yeah. overwhelming to think about the power this could this could have. I mean, we've got we have all these statewide policy conversations happening about education and about the future of Vermont and how we, you know, keep our economy running and where people are going to live because we're in this major housing crisis. Like, there's all these, all these um, things happening in Vermont right now, and I just, I'm really excited about the positive, huge step forward for Central Vermont that this, this will have. So. Yeah, I think. Well, it's, it's, yeah. When it comes to community engagement, too, CT centers are always, I think, there's the easiest for all demographics to support. I mean, who doesn't want kids with skills, employable adults, people that can stay in their communities and make them better, um, no matter what your political slant is or whether you are, you know, heavily worried about your taxes, like all of us are, it's something so easy to support. Um, it's spread across a large group and, you know, we, we find as long as we can get our word out there, we can gain garnish community support for everything we, you do, you know. Yeah, that's, that's something also to think about is um, internally, um, you know, th there's going to need to be, you know, the website set up and communications, um, you know, might be putting information out through various um, media and then, you know, coordinating the efforts. So I don't know if you have somebody like on staff, um, often our clients will say, oh, we got it covered, we got it covered, but they don't really have it covered. So um, so just think about that, like, like, in, you know, because this is a, this is a lot of work. Jo you know, Jody is, has a job already as the director and maybe she has bandwidth to spend, you know, uh, a lot of time on this project, maybe she doesn't. And, but it's a thing, you know, that's the thing. It's not like, oh, we'll just, we'll just, we'll just add, um, we'll add this to, to everybody's plate and life will be, you know, we'll sail along as usual. It's, it's a big project. It's complicated. There's going to be a lot of strategizing. And I just, I just want to, you know, I think it's worth considering how you're going to resource the project. I have a comment, Jody. Um, we're working with Truex right now at Harwood, and I want to just second what Dave said about getting your word out and making sure the information that you're sharing is current and that your community is on board and involved from the beginning because it's a lot of money and it's a lot of things for people to consider. So um, I know that is a challenge, it, and, and it, it will get it is a challenge to get people to actually pay attention beforehand. So I just second what he's saying, get your website up, make sure you're showing the hopes and dreams and ideas like right out of the gate. Thanks, Ashley. Guy? I just wanted to second that. Uh, Ashley, I just want to comment. I The first time I've ever seen you without your hat on, but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, this is another uh, another way we can involve our students. I mean, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't engaged with our technology folks, and, and I'm going to excuse my French as a board member, but we have a kick-ass technology group that if you give them a project, they will help you. And, uh, you know, I, I really think we can do this. I mean, I really do. Yeah, there were some um, videos made last time that you were able to make in house, which I think that's a you know video is an incredibly powerful media uh, because you can really play to people's emotions, which is what this is all about. To be quite honest, um, people vote with their hearts, you know, and um, so that's what we have to appeal to. And video is just really powerful when it comes to that. So if we can tap into the resources at the center and get help with that, uh, making you know, videos for for the project, I think that's going to be great. So is the facilities committee recommending the board enter into an agreement? 
That is the recommendation. Okay. Yes. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Do we have I'll a second? I'll second. I'll second. Okay. Double seconds, Guy and Ashley. I'll yield to Ashley without the hat. <laughs> I have a new haircut. That's why I'm not wearing my hat. It's only like once a month. All right. Any further questions, discussion? It's exciting. And our facilities crew is Terry, Sonia, Guy, Guy, Guy Floor, Floor. Okay. All right. And Terry for a few more weeks. Yep. Well, same for floor. Oh. Never going to forgive. And s <laughs> we don't know yet if we'll get Sonia back. Please. Yes. Are you interested? <laughs> yes, but um, you have to know my board. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. It's complicated. <laughs> Got it. All right, well, without further discussion or questions on the motion, um, do we have a motion to enter into the agreement? Um, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. That is really exciting. Um, and so Jody is our representative of the district, and so she would be the one actually signing I'll it. I'll sign it and send it back tomorrow. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Looking forward to it. That's two. Thanks, folks. Okay. All right. Good night. Bye. Enjoy your Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank Good you. Night. Yep. Bye. The goosebumps. That's exciting. That's amazing. That's a big step forward. All right. Next up, we are looking for an update from our program quality committee. <laughs> well. It's the CLNA has been working on, um, there has been a number of surveys that have gone out, uh, looking at our different constituents, we're looking at students, parents, uh, folks who hire our students, you know, um, and the surveys have yielded amazing responses about everyone at the, st at the career center our students are passionate. Their parents feel like it's say it's been a life-saving experience for them, um, and we're looking at how we continue to review the, these um, features that will help with the Perkins grant. And so your packet, I think, contains a lot of the responses from the teachers and the pa no, you don't the have board it. Board packet doesn't know. You don't have it. <laughs> you it's really take, cool. Take it's my, really cool. Just take my word. For Everyone it. got the uh, program quality packet, so if you didn't take a look at that because you weren't part of that committee, you can go back in and look at that. I think the phenomenal thing about the student survey, and and we were able to capture those results in our annual report as well, is that we had overwhelming it was positive it was even more positive than last time and we, who would have thought that was possible and 131 of our 186 students completed the survey wow wow yeah that's that's, awesome. that's unheard of so it's, it's it was a huge amazing. celebration of the work that goes on here and it just gives you goosebumps All right, so everyone check out your program quality packet if you yeah. haven't already. Awesome. It's interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, and, and I'm only asking these because we're this is our last meeting before town meeting day, and I'm not, uh, I don't have the best memory. Are you two the only program quality? Is there another board member? Who's Ashley, oh, Ashley is, that's right. but that's sorry, I haven't been very helpful with that. I'm a little overloaded on my board at the moment. <laughs> we had a lot. We'll just carry on and know that someday you'll join us. Well, I think I might also be um, not here in the next year. Um, I think my run will come to an end at town meeting as well. I'm oh, no. Yeah, I'm sorry to say that, but I'm, I think I'm taking the bigger job and I'm already, I'm already the bond committee chair. So, um, oh, wow. yeah. And if you, 
Yep. Yeah. But I'm going to make sure you get somebody great. I'm going to try to get John Young to come back on or um, somebody else that is awesome. also awesome. So we'll find somebody on there. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Ashley. Oh. Wow. All right, Jim. Jim, who, we got to pick somebody from uh, from the current board to join this group. Can't be, uh, can't be as awesome as you, Ash. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yep. So uh, uh, I will, I will stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, okay, you'll take good care of us. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. <laughs> Great. All right. Next up is negotiations. We haven't had to meet. Our cycle uh, is complete. <laughs> Till next time. Which feels good. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, next up we have our superintendent's report. So I shared the report with you. Um, the building trade students were able to shore up the mobile home out in the student parking lot. And our Thanks to the leadership of Stephanie and Tim and Exploratory, those Expo students have demolitioned that trailer. <laughs> they have taken so much out of it. They've done such a great job. It's phenomenal. We're now just waiting permits um, so we can start fixing the insides. So that's kind of the next step is roof and flooring, I think, are the next two things. And We've uh, reached out to several companies around our materials list to get some donations. I know, thank you, Jim, Kingsbury Construction is looking at doing some of that. And we've already received some materials from VHV. So, and we've got a few other companies that are looking to support us as well. So that's really exciting. You've all just approved the MOU to do the Habitat for Humanity mm -hmm. project. So we'll move forward with that as well. So lots of exciting stuff for our building trades, um, electrical, plumbing and heating. Digital Media Arts has been kind of chronicling uh, the work with the mobile home. So they took photos and video of it when it arrived. They've gone out there a couple times during the demolition and, and they were here when the, the governor came and spoke with the students. And so they're gonna continue doing that and create a documentary of I the project, that. similar to the STEAM one that yeah, we did yeah, last year. Yeah. Uh, let's see. We're excited with our new welding teacher. He's super happy to be here. He's already been working with students. He was started on the first day of our shadows for admissions. Um, so got to meet all of the pers prospective students for his program so far. He's also started visiting other tech centers with welding programs. So he's getting to know what who the instructors are, what is their curriculum like, what are they doing, what equipment do they have, that sort of thing. So he's jumping in and doing great so far. He's supporting an auto um, during the student day. Great. Program preview is the day before break. We're excited about that. It's the best use of a day before break I've ever seen. <laughs> and so we are gonna continue that. I love it. Um, we've been working with the CLNA team. We're gonna have one more committee meeting for that team. Um, to look at labor market data. We weren't able mm -hmm. to get that done yet, but we've looked at the program size, scope, and sequence information or quality information. We've looked at program of study analysis. We've looked at the survey data. And so we have le labor market left to look at. And then I will prepare a presentation for the board on our findings after that. Great. You got the budget postcards, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And I know I got mine last Tuesday and the annual reports are here in the building and you can grab one on your way out if you're here. I did you can not come and get one postcards. otherwise. <gasps> I okay. Any, like, recycle them them. No, no. <laughs> I did, I did. it was pretty cool to have my daughter grab it and read it. Mm -hmm. um, Guy? Yeah, Jody, uh, update on the welding program, uh, where it's gonna be located. So, um, one of the places we're thinking about is current it is a former tech ed classroom here on campus it's the maintenance shop for facilities the busd facilities right now i did have the agency of education stop by and they believe it will be a feasible spot and i believe that um, facilities gave me the go ahead to take the next step so i've reached out to chris hennessy the superintendent for a berry 
um, to ask for a meeting to discuss this. So he is aware that I have that interest and I'm gonna put it in writing next. Because first it was just a, can we check in? Here's what I want. How do you want me to proceed with this? So the next step is to put it in writing, which I've drafted today and we'll be sending out to him tomorrow. Thank you. The other question I have is, will the mobile home be out of the area of remediation before they do the project? We, we must move it by June, by the end of June. Um, so because that parking lot is going away. And so that's another, um, another dilemma or problem to solve. Our student lot is going to become grass. Uh, it's the stormwater abatement or stormwater I don't know what it's called, project, but basically to um, fix or stop erosion that's happening along the, the river that goes alongside the property. Um, this is one of the steps they need to take. And so there will be, that will be grass, there will be a swale, which is kind of a um, kind of gully with longer grass, which is right where um, the guardrail is now that separates that parking lot from the road that goes around the school so we will lose our student parking lot for next fall and we do need to remove the mobile home before then our intent was to have it done by june so more lawn chairs for watching baseball but fewer parking spots so uh just some feedback about somebody who commented on uh the potential parking on both sides of air street uh there I think the, the city is going to say you can't do it because uh, the trucks that go through there won't be able to go through there. So just a heads up, that's just an anecdotal piece, but it was from somebody who lives on Air Street. So Yeah, I, there's certainly been times now where it hasn't been plowed well and Students are parking sideways on snow banks trying to um, get to school and vehicles can only, it's like a one-way street sometimes. So that's definitely tough. We do believe we'll have the um, spots along the sidewalk um, next to the, the road that goes around the building that are in the current faculty lot where we have the trades fair. So we think those ones along the sidewalk at the back can be for students. So there's a small percentage of parking that we would be able to maintain in discussions with uh, the Spalding principal. There's not really anything else we can do about parking yeah. is there? Is it just no. gonna be sort of first come, first serve? Well, it's first we have to allow it for our students who come from out of our sending school region. Mm -hmm. So for instance, we have students from Danville, Randolph, uh, Williamstown, Northfield. Okay. They have to provide their own transportation, so we need them to have a place to park. Uh, I see. Then it goes tends to go to co-op students, and we can alternate because we have co-op students coming different days of the week now. We That's a smaller number of spots that we need to hold for them. And then it's first come first serve, and and they can the students cannot have school, um, classes at their sending school. That's our current rule, because we were finding that students, if they were driving here, weren't always going back to their sending school. And since their sending school does provide transportation, mm -hmm. we're trying to push them to use that okay. if they have classes there, especially. Okay, thank you. That yeah. Makes sense. Sonia. Um. Thanks. I um. I'm super excited about the digital media arts chronicling the whole mobile home story. I think that's amazing. I was going to ask the question and then you said they were doing it. It was like, you do have a crystal ball, Jody. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, my question, my next question is about the annual report. I just went to the website and I did see that that is posted. Do you have um, a budget page or will you have a budget page that will explain about the budget and how that works and that we, those um, ballots are still going out for town meeting day, that kind of thing. We do have a budget page. It is updated with the latest budget. It, I don't remember how much it explains. And it's a little complicated right now. The website that we have right now was created by our former digital media arts teacher. 
and it's on it was based off a web let's see dreamweaver and adobe muse which is no longer being supported or continued and so it takes a lot of work to get it updated right now so we are transitioning to a new website which should be up and running in april and so we're, we're just trying to be cautious about the things that we do put up there, but that is an important piece. And I'll check that page tomorrow and, and have Chip update that. He's our IT person. I think um, it, I just went to the, I went to your page, but I've been to the Barry page and it's a great place. You can just push people there who have questions and want more information. It's just a great way to not have to put everything on front porch forum or social media. Yeah. yeah. And last year when we did the budget forum right after the annual meeting, we the finance committee had kind of planned that out and we might need another meeting for that. <coughs> Just reminded me of that. So thank you, Sonia. All right. Anything else on the superintendent's report? All right, next up, we uh, the board needs to approve the draft FY25 um, calendar, which was also in our packet. Yep. And you should have seen something very similar in your regular boards, your regular mm -hmm. school board meeting. So we we have worked, the superintendents across all of our sending schools, oh, and I have worked together on this. Because that was something that came up when we went through the review that we needed to have calendars that were uniform. Mm -hmm. The caveat for your superintendent is he also has to meet the academies right. in Danville's, and so right. it can get complicated. Yep. All right, do I have a motion to approve the calendar for the upcoming school year? So moved. Alignment. Do I have a second? I'll second it, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Um, any further discussion? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. All right. And then um, we do have a committee on the superintendent evaluation, which we're going to go into executive session in a little bit. Um, so we'll keep going. Um, are there any staffing or personnel updates? No? Okay. Um, and everyone should have received your accounts payable. Mm -hmm. um, that's always helpful. All right, so next up we're looking to move into executive session. Um, the motion language is in the agenda. Mm -hmm. And I think you could go if you wanted to, Jody, because after Yay. we're done, we can, we're adjourning. Oh, but yeah, we're using Okay, you'll I'll, be in your I'll office. I'll come back because that's okay. my computer. Oh, no. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. No. Unless we can invite the superintendent in, but that's not what we're doing. It's right? fine. Okay. We could. Uh, just to remind you, yeah. though, before you go in, <clears throat> this draft that you have in the packet is based off the rubrics, and it's as close as we could come to the BSBA model of the survey that you did for the first year. Okay. Um, so I did reach out to Sue Sikolowski, and, and this is basically the same thing that we've created in a Google form because they okay. use SurveyMonkey. Okay. So any edits to this, um, Chip created it. He can update it to whatever you guys okay. want, and then he will turn it over to, completely to Jill, so she will own it. Okay. at that point Great. and if you prefer that Jill does the updates that's also fine okay. we just need Chip to be able to know if there are any or what he needs to do okay. all right um, did, I, did I close the motion did I call no okay uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. okay so we are gonna move into executive session <clears throat> 